Let's talk about stop switches. You'd think it'd be pretty simple. You wire it up to the power. When an emergency happens, you hit the button and everything stops. Turns out to be a little more complicated than that. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. For those of you that are familiar with my channel, you know that I like to tinker, I like to modify, I like to build things. And you know that I've done a ton of improvements to my mill, to my lathe, and to other shop tools that I have. My mill lathe combo came with a simple direction switch that also doubled as the power switch, because that's a good idea. There was no emergency stop, there was no master power, there was no, well, frankly, there weren't any other switches. It was just forward, off, and reverse. That's That was the sum total of what my machine came with. I've done a lot of upgrades to that machine, I've added a lot of things, and I decided that an emergency stop switch would be a good idea. And you can see that install if you watch my DIY control panel build. But as I was doing that, I learned a few things about this emergency stop switch, and I figured I would do a short video and hopefully help people figure out exactly how this works, because I thought it was going to be something super simple, and it turned out to be just ever so slightly more complicated than that. So the first question is, how do you mount this thing? Well, you can see that there's a nut here, but how do you get it apart? How do I get to the point that I can drill out a hole and mount that into something? Well, I see two screws on the back, so let's go ahead and take those screws out and see what happens. Well, that's interesting. The switches are out. Well, that's our push button mechanism. There is a screw right there. Don't take that screw out. It's a real pain to get this reset so that it functions properly, so that twisting it leaves it in the on position and emergency stop works. I made that mistake and that's not how you get this thing apart. We know it's not this, so let's go ahead and put these buttons back on. So that begs the question, how do we get this main shaft separated so that you can mount this in a box? Well, it turns out it is really very simple. You see that hole right there? If you stick a screwdriver in that hole and pry, you basically release a little catch and now this pops out. So all we have to do is unscrew the nut. Let's say that this was the place where we're mounting it. Screw the nut back down and we can now snap this back into place. And you're set to go. So that's all it takes for mounting it. Really pretty simple. The other thing and I didn't know this until I wired it up and couldn't figure out why my machine wasn't working. I didn't notice that these switches are different. This one says NO for normally open, and that one says NC for normally closed. So what that means is when it's in the running position, so we haven't hit emergency stop, so it's out, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Normally open is not gonna make a connection. The connection is going to be open. Normally closed is going to be making the connection. The connection between this terminal and this terminal is closed, meaning we have continuity. When we push the button and hit emergency stop, this one that is normally closed is now open, and this one that is normally open is now closed. Now, why would they do that? Well, it's really pretty simple. The normally closed option would be for your power lead. You would hook it up when we are in the run position, power is flowing and it works just as it's supposed to. We hit emergency stop, the connection is broken. This normally open one would be for something else, something that might signify that we have a problem. 
Maybe that's tied to an alarm. Maybe that's tied to a relay that cuts power to something else. Any number of things could be hooked up with that so that when we're in an emergency situation, something else turns on. Now, I didn't want that. I did not want to have one closed and one open. So what I did is did a little Google search with the numbers on the side of the switch. I knew that the switches were individual pieces from taking the thing apart and discovered that I could order more switches. Here I have another normally closed switch. With that in mind, I can now take the switch that is normally open and remove it and put a second normally closed switch into this configuration. This is really kind of a cool way to do this. The fact that these are modular and you have these options to configure them allows you to make this work however you need it to for your application. I was able to order the switches that I needed to make this normally closed. If I wanted it to be normally open, you can order these switches as well. And that's all it takes to configure it for your project. Not a lot to these emergency stop switches, but there was definitely a few things that I had to figure out. And I thought I should make this video because this information might save you some time. As always, anything that you've seen in my videos is linked in the description. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to make a comment or shoot me an email through my website. And please, don't forget to hit subscribe. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.